Dyslipidemia is a medical term which describes elevated cholesterol and elevated triglycerides. It is a lipid disorder. It has several causes which includes a genetic cause, medical history such as metabolic syndrome, endocrine disorders which includes diabetes mellitus, hypothyroid, Cushing's disease, polycystic ovarian syndrome, and kidney disease. Certain medications can also affect the lipid disorder, which includes birth control, steroids, diuretics, and antidepressants. Lifestyle and diet are also risk factors for dyslipidemia, and they include alcohol, fatty diet, sedentary lifestyles, lack of exercise, and smoking. <clears throat> National Cholesterol Education Program Adult Treatment Plan 3 is a guideline which helps health professionals in determining cholesterol management. It is a step program. Step one is to obtain lipoprotein levels. This includes the total cholesterol, LDL cholesterol, which is commonly known as the bad cholesterol, HDL cholesterol, which is known as the good cholesterol, and the triglyceride levels. Step two is to identify the presence of atherosclerotic disease. Atherosclerosis is a condition when fatty substances builds up in the arterial walls. This then causes thickening and hardening of the arteries, which can result in coronary heart disease, symptomatic coronary heart disease, which is the clinical heart disease, symptomatic carotid artery disease, peripheral arter arterial disease, and abdominal aortic aneurysm. Step three is to determine major risk factors. This includes cigarette smoking, hypertension with a blood pressure reading of greater than 140 over 90 millimeters of mercury, low HDL cholesterol, which is less than 40 milligrams per deciliter, family history of premature coronary heart disease, in males first degree relative of less than 55 years of age and female first degree relative of less than 65 years of age. Age is also a risk factor in men greater than 45 years old and women greater than 55 years old. Treatment of low HDL first includes the LDL goal. It is important to reach our LDL goal, then intensify weight management and increase physical activity. HDL goal is very much affected by lifestyle in terms of exercise. So sedentary lifestyle will definitely affect the HDL goal. Step four is determining the risk factors, your major risk factors, which is a 10-year risk factors for coronary heart disease, looking at the Framingham Point System. Framingham Point System differentiates male and female gender and it includes the age, whether a patient has a history of smoking, their total cholesterol count, and their blood pressure. Step five is to determine the risk category. Now the risk category looks at the category for coronary heart disease in terms of LDL goal. Patients who have high risk for coronary heart disease should reach an LDL goal of less than 100. Patients with low risk has an LDL goal of less than 130. Step six is to work on whether or not therapeutic lifestyle changes or drug therapy will be needed to reach the LDL goal. Whether the risk factor is high or low for patients, therapeutic lifestyle changes is important. This includes diet, which is low in saturated fats, weight management, and increased physical activity. Step seven is the drug therapy. If the LDL goal is above the normal ranges, and depending on the patient's risk factor, we consider drug therapy after therapeutic lifestyle changes. This includes your statin medications, your bile acid sequestrants, nicotinic acid, and fibroids. Step eight is to identify whether a patient has metabolic syndrome. This can be determined if the patient has abdominal obesity, which in men, a waistline of greater than 40 inches, and women, a waistline of greater than 35 inches. We look at the triglyceride count, HDL cholesterol, 
blood pressure, and fasting glucose. To treat the metabolic syndrome, it is important to treat the underlying cause. If overweight and obesity is an issue or physical inactivity, we need to address this first. Then we treat the lipid panel, depending on patient's HDL count, LDL count, and triglyceride level. We also would like to treat the underlying causes of any other risk factors, including hypertension. Step nine is to treat elevated triglycerides. Remember that our goal is always to reach an LDL desired depending on patient's risk factors. Once this is achieved, then we treat triglycerides. It is important to treat triglycerides to decrease the patient's risk for pancreatitis. Lipid disorder is very important in a patient's health and well-being. It is important to be cautious with your diet and your lifestyle, including active lifestyle. To help prevent cholesterol levels to be elevated, it is important to watch definitely what you eat and, and what you do, your normal day-to-day -day living, stress, activity. It is important that once you reach age 35 in men and age 45 in women, that you have a regular checkup with your physician, check your cholesterol level in order to start being proactive in determining your lipid level to prevent this lipidemia. Again, this lipidemia looks at the elevated triglyceride and elevated cholesterol level. It is very, very important to watch this in prevention of heart disease and atherosclerotic heart disease.